I am Noriko Bolfo, and this is on Cocaine. Apparently, the age of cocaine plates crashing in the interior has returned yet again. On Sunday night, three foreign nationals were detained by police in Isano Region 7 after their Cessna aircraft made an emergency landing at the Nine Miles airstrip in Middle Mazaruni. Police said there were two Venezuelans and a Brazilian on board. The men claimed that they developed mechanical problems as they were flying from Brazil to Suriname. The impact of the landing reportedly fractured the right arm of one of the plane's occupants. The men also claimed that there was a second aircraft which crashed in the rainforest. Nothing illegal was found in this plane or in its vicinity. However, after the discovery of drugs and a dead body in the second airplane, police are starting to doubt the trio's story. The police were able to find the airplane the following morning. But now it is believed that the men did not have mechanical issues, rather they came to the rescue of their partner in crime or to recover the goods before anyone else could get to it. Sources claim that a bob of money and gold was also in the crushed plane, however this has not been confirmed as I am sure someone is probably trying to see how much they can take off the top before they can confirm the discovery with the public. Trump's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is coming on Thursday. And this morning, a military aircraft carrying his support team landed at Chetty Jagan ahead of Pompeo's arrival. The Minister of Foreign Affairs says that Pompeo has no agenda and is only here for a two-day visit, one which will see him signing several agreements with the president and visiting other government officials. No agenda? This is America, people. They don't even use the washroom without an agenda. Anyway, Trotman warned the government not to give in to America's demands, especially when it comes to dealing with Venezuela. I understand his concerns. Mr. Pompeo's visit is pretty interesting when you think about it, seeing as the US election is coming up in a few weeks and Trump needs a win. So let's hope they don't end up building a military base here to attack Venezuela. But if they do, well, you know you heard it here. This morning kicked off day one of the national budget debate. And as expected, it was long and boring, so I'm not going to bore you with the finer details, but just know that they spent all day shooting accusations back and forth about whose leadership was better and whose was worst. The National Budget Board 2020 was set at 330 billion guiana dollars. If you are fast like me, you will love this smartphone camera lens kit. See further, wider, clearer. Get it at Triple B's. Call them now on telephone number 682-8326 or visit them on Facebook, Triple B's Enterprise. Remember the name. On Friday evening, an intelligence-led GEA operation led to the breaking up of an illegal fuel operation close to Laguan in the Esequibo River. According to Big Smith's News Watch, one of the two vessels involved in the illegal fuel transfer belonged to a popular local chain of gas stations on the East Bank and West Demerora. Five men were arrested and subsequently released on bail. Nevertheless, an investigation is ongoing. The police is telling everyone to watch out for a piece of fake news that claimed that they are investigating Mohammed's enterprise for money laundering. The photo being circulated is of a fake Kaicher news article claiming that the major gold dealer is being investigated by the police. The fake article also alleges that they were involved with scamming Yuri and a taker's Ponzi scheme. Kaicher News did not publish such an article. 38-year-old Taylor Narendra Prasad of Ondanaming Sandpit Esequibo Coast was shot in the foot during a home invasion attempt last Saturday. Prasad and his wife were on the veranda of their house when two masked gunmen entered their property. The two ran inside the house, but not before one of the men shot Prasad in the foot. The gunmen immediately fled from the scene. No arrests have been made as of yet. Just like a trifling and abusive husband who spent out his salary at the local cut house, Russell is crawling back home to Guyana asking for money. Or 
To be more specific, they are in serious talks with the PPP government about resuming operations in Region 10, but only if the government financially assists the multinational company that produces much of the world's aluminum. Yes, they want Guyana to dredge the Burbis River for them and help them in rehiring Guyanese. They are also looking for concessionary agreements from this government since Apanu wasn't willing to play by their rules back then. I'll be honest though, people, I feel that if this government accepts Rousseau back, I think it will be a step backwards. We have some of the best quality bauxite in the world. We can get any major company we want. This country's leaders need to wake up and stop acting like we're the ugly stepsister of the Caribbean. We're the beautiful dogla girl who needs to get her respect when it's due. You've always dreamed of owning your own car, but it seems like your foot is destined to be on the tar. Change your destiny. Bring your $800,000 savings down to BM Sototo sales at Lot 9 Crow Street, Georgetown. Tell them Noriko sent you to find out about their loan option, or call them on telephone number 231-8451. PM sold auto sales. It's your turn to draw. Now, let's take a look at news in the region and around the world. An, quote, American spy was arrested near Venezuelan oil installations last week, and that spy will be charged with terrorism. Venezuela announced the arrest on Friday, saying the man had been spying on two oil refineries when he was captured with cash and weapons. President Nicolas Maduro said the U.S. citizen had been, quote, spying in Falcon State on the Amway and Cardone refineries, end quote. According to Maduro, the man was a U.S. Marine who had previously served at CIA bases in Iraq. Oh my. Thousands of people have already launched a call to boycott Netflix over a French film known as Cuties in English. They are angry that its preteen stars were portrayed in a sexualized way. U.S. Senator and possible Zodiac killer Ted Cruz has penned a letter to the Department of Justice demanding a child porn probe into the film. However, a Netflix spokesperson said that people are taking the movie all wrong, saying that the movie is a social commentary against the sexualization of young children and the struggles conservative immigrant communities face when confronted with liberal Western values, as well as social media's emphasis on appearance. Well, that sounds interesting, but I doubt I'm going to watch it. I don't really like to see little children gyrating around half-naked. Moving on. The Chinese owner of TikTok has chosen Oracle to be the ops technology partner for its US operations and has rejected an acquisition offer from Microsoft just days before the deadline from President Trump threatening to bomb the popular app unless its American operations are sold. It was unclear whether TikTok's choice of Oracle as a technology partner would mean that Oracle would also take a majority ownership stake of the social media app. The Trump administration's executive order regarding TikTok was signed over concerns that the Chinese could use the app to spy on Americans. There is a legit way you could earn some extra cash to supplement your existing hustle. Sell top-up. You could become a top-up vendor quick and easy by linking Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. And now for our weird news story of the day. Face masks. Our government has decided to fine people who refuse to wear them in public. But officials in Indonesia said fines are much too easy. Instead, the nation has come up with a creative way to punish rule breakers and to solve their shortage of grave diggers. People who have been caught not wearing a face mask have been ordered to dig the graves for those who had died of coronavirus as a deterrent for violating the rules. They were assigned to dig the graves in groups of two, but were not forced to participate in the following funeral services. The number of coronavirus cases has been continuing to rise in this district, prompting the village to wrap up preventative measures. Moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Friday's question was, School is back in session Monday. Too soon or not soon enough? 
Nikita Boudou said, The ministry should do more groundwork in training with teachers. Some teachers don't have access to the internet in their homes. And Don <laughs> Dongles. Dongles Master said, The show must go on. Start online classes and distance learning right now. The people hire must be ready to adopt and make changes when and where necessary. Linux Frederick says, As a teacher, I welcome the opening of school in the way it is, because the sad reality is that most learners are at home, not making an effort to review what's in their books. The longer school takes to reopen, it's going to be more difficult on teachers. Good answers, people. So tonight I leave you with this question. Roussel wants to come back. Should the government take him back or kick him to the curb? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good, we just might feature it in Tuesday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Noriko Paulford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!